everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney Archer, and today we are trucking along in another leg of our Big Art Quest fairy tale. We're working on our freshwater mermaid, and we're going to be continuing on resolving this area and refining stuff through her and the tail, pulling it all in. We're going to go for about an hour today. If we have anything left to do, we'll just meet back up again because our whole commitment for this was just to do the work. Not really push through and rush it if we didn't have to. And just make sure we got through all these 12 amazing designs so we could have a fabulous wall. Each of these is like a weekly thing, but some of these end up being more than weekly for catching up. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He is going to be tracking you, uh, catching your questions. He's going to be tracking me with cameras so you can see everything I'm doing. I'm going to be explaining every step of this painting which takes a project that could seem really overwhelming, even if you have a few art skills, and makes it a little less complicated by just breaking it down into little micro bits that you can digest easily. That is the thinking behind this. I'm going to sip my coffee. I hope everyone's having a nice Sunday. I know it's a weird uh, bat time for us, but at least it's the same bat channel. Oh, yeah. No, this is great. So nice to get on here and do a little bit of painting. A little bit. <sighs> so if you check the description below. Mm-hmm. All the materials there and a link to the website. On the website are a bunch of reference materials. And all of these references are so that you can see what something might look like. How would this water look? How would this fish look? How are we going to fantasy do her tail based on fish? I think it's kind of interesting we're using some very similar skills that animators and concept artists do when they're working with the studio to, like, make a concept come alive. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Henson Studio, we're walking in some great Titan shoes. I'm just telling you right now with this process. I, I really have learned. I mean, to say that I have learned a lot from watching this show is an understatement. Um, I mean, like you saw, I, I get for the first time to like do some stuff the other day. And like I used a lot of the skills you on did. my you Merlot. You skilled it up. I did. I was really proud of you. That was I was cool. really excited. Like there's a lot of stuff I, I learned about color here. So I'm just going to assess and think what I'm going to work next. I think I'm going to come through here and start to put in some tail and maybe some water through here and maybe some rock and just keep pulling it in. So I will put out some paint that will help me get these things done. You need some paint to paint? I do. It's so crazy how I always need this paint to paint. I'm going to put out my... I'm actually going to run both of my CADs today. You know, um, one of the things that we forget right, because we get so uh, fond of our pigments, right, is that it's not really always like that it's cad red and cad red light, right, but that it's a, it is the two types of red, right, even though these are both red, warm reds, this red is a little bit cooler than that red. And having a variety of yellows or reds on your palette can really help you when you're trying to uh, mix colors. But don't get so caught in the pigment that you, you know, get frozen and you can't, you know, make a decision and do what you need to do and you wait up on a whole project trying to get some stuff out. I'm going to put out a lot of color today because I'm not even really sure what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, I know what I'm doing, but. You're not sure which color you're going to get into yet. No, I'm kind of just getting in this today almost therapeutically. Look at this hot mess that my tube of paint is. Just so bad. I have to periodically peel my. I don't get my caps put on correctly, and what that causes on these self-sealing caps See, look, is what you're seeing right here, which is, then I got to go peel them off. Now, I, now we have the picture and picture of you peeling. Look, <laughs> remember, we, I, we had this from my screen, so now I can use it over here, so we can watch Oh, you wait. Watch. No, I didn't know you were doing that. I just did. That's why I say it. Just, well, just good. You on. can look at the back of my head. That's weird and crazy. No, it's not the back of your head. I'm going to put out some Indian yellow, because I just <laughs> love this color. It's so weird. Look at this. See, I get this, I get this thing, too. Like, I get the lip on top that gets this front, and then I, yeah! That's how I get paint all over my fingers. See, sometimes... No I one is ever going to not know I'm an artist. Not because I'm, like, pretentious and be like, hey, I'm an artist, you should do what I say. But uh, mostly because I'm so messy. And then I realized I didn't put out a color that I need. Why did that happen? Color. Because I did not prepare correctly. What? Oh, you mean, like, you didn't actually just get get a color. Yeah, I like, you, didn't get it. You disappeared off the... She's, she's I forgot my browns. Gone. Oh, there she is. Oh, this one's really bad. I for, I haven't peeled my uh, tubes lately, so they get, they get really not messy. They 
This is the most of the hot messes. And I'm going to have to give this one to John because the burnt umber, it burnished, which is a way of saying it polished. <laughs> and has really cured, so he's going to be digging that out with his tools. And I lost a cap, which is why you always keep caps around. I save every cap I have. Mm-hmm. Because if you ever lose a cap, it's really nice to have some clean, soaked, ready to be put back on caps. Yes, spare caps. Very <laughs> useful. I'm going to get right into it today. Is what I think I'm going to do. All right, what I'm I've ready. got in my little tool kit put away and ready to rock and roll. <laughs> it's always interesting to look to see what I've got going on around everywhere. What I'm using. I'll always put down like the brushes and stuff like that that I use in the show so that you can see what I had going on. I'm just wondering like where is everything going? It feels like stuff is missing. It's that kind of a day. Yes. All right. I think I'm going to work on the tail a little bit is what I'm feeling first because I've got to put a little water over it and everything. And so I think it'll be fun to start to work on the tail and maybe rough in a little of her body and go. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to take a little of my quinacridone and mix it into my cad red, which I like to do. You guys know I love this mixture so much. Either, either combo of these is just fantastic. And I'm going to get a little... Indian yellow into this, and I'll start to pull some white. Just creating this sort of underscale color that I see in my koi fish reference, which is uh, right here. I'm just starting to think about how this is and how I might paint her so that she resembles that, you know, a little bit. Yeah. As I get a little paint. I love to wipe the paint off my book. Up here, this is going to be lighter. You know, it's in the light more, and we can see it. Oh, definitely on the bum bum. I love the bum bum. And it can still be a little bit light under the water. I'll tell you a little trick, though. When things are under the water, they tend to darken a smidge. Sometimes quite a lot, depending on where they're located. So that's a good thing that you can know about to help create the effect that something is underwater. Glazing medium, hopefully is not plugged, it is. Totally plugged. Eh. I gotta go get a grip more of that. <laughs> I, I, there's little half cannibalized bottles all through the studio of this stuff. Oh yeah. This was one of my great things that came into my life, one of my great art supplies. I, I have to tell you, John, I think that um, one of the, the worst bits of advice that I see teachers sometimes give really beginning students is, and I've done it, is to use a uh, retarder. Hmm. You know, I'm going to put this light color right here at the bend of the tail. And the reason is, is because there's such a specific ratio of mixes in retarder that you have to stay within. And if you get out of it, it just ruins the painting. And it's hard enough for beginners to deal with a new painting. But the chances that they'll accidentally, in that pressure, m like mismanage their retarder is really high. So that glazing medium, that was a total gift coming to my world. Because it doesn't do that. It's so forgiving. You can glaze and you can extend. Mm. No problem. Multi-tool. Now as I'm coming out here, I'm going to just kind of brush this out really lightly. Now we're going to give her quite a little tail, like you do. I'm not going to take it all the way. I'm going to actually probably pull it into some zinc because I want it to be pretty transparent. I'm not going to have the red in her tail, you know, the orange color of her scales. So I think I'll probably take the tail into a white. And you can see I've got this. This is a... Number for Cambridge, it's got a bristle synthetic mix in it, which is what's giving me this nice scratchy dry brush effect. I mean, also my pressure and load and, and water helps too. <laughs> yeah, it's just a weird thing. Like you, you see artists like struggling with the retarder and it's really about those limited mixes that you can use. I mean, I love it. And when you're used to it, Totally worth getting. I'm rinsing this out. And I'll go ahead and throw some zinc on my palette to be, to be feisty. Are you feisty? <laughs> oh. 
Uh, I am. There we go. Some adjustments here to the. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. So you can see this. What the zinc does is it it lets you see a little bit through it. It's a little transparent. It also doesn't change the color of the pigment as much as the titanium white does. There was an interesting nope. thing which, that was which brought, white were you using? This is the zinc. Yeah, it's zinc white. Sorry, so, I may have been on the screen. Just want to make sure. I know you guys are going to start hearing this on the boards and the groups and stuff about the zinc because um, a lot of the good paint companies, actually this would be a good indication if your paint company is one of the good ones, <laughs> is reformulating their oil paints because zinc cracks oil. Oh. That's, where the, that's one of the reasons that the crazing happens. It, it makes paint brittle. Oh, look at how, look at that tail look like a veil. It does. It makes the uh, paint brittle. Now, if you want that. No, you don't want that. But, I mean, like. Nobody wants it. <laughs> <laughs> you it's could be it's a problem in conservation <laughs> art, and it, it doesn't take it that long to happen. Um, but zinc is an amazing color. So many, oh, like, much like lead white, the oil artists continue to like to look, <laughs> use it. This does not apply to acrylic paint. In fact, this is a good little IQ test for uh, people talking about paint. The acrylic paint is not, as far as anyone has ever been able to determine, impacted by the zinc. It's just a formulation of the oil. And that's actually true of a lot of pigments. There are pigments you can't use in acrylic because they just won't blend into the emulsion. Oh, huh. well, that I remember I remember you talking about. Yeah. Because I was like, what? They're ki I was like, I heard that, you know, when I went and looked it up, it was just, oh, no, it's just oils, which is, this isn't really new news, but it's. The companies that make the fine oils are starting to, I'm making a lighter color right here, um, starting to announce stuff. And so you're going to hear uh, people panicking just in general or having um, half-informed opinions <laughs> that they feel very passionate about. Just expect it. You're going to be sitting there going, is zinc gone? I really like zinc. And the Sherpa always uses zinc. Yeah, I paint acrylic, so my world will be different. Check with your manufacturer. Yeah. They'll probably tell you what you're, you know. It depends on your manufacturer. I have to tell you, actually, this is a big drama in the art world. It's, you know, it's true. They're having a little, they're having some feels about it between the companies. Pick your, yeah. pick your flavor. Some of the inexpensive oil companies are choosing not to label or reformulate or anything. And again, all of the companies are probably going to keep the zinc, but they're going to offer an alternative that's an equivalent that's more archival and meets the uh, standards that the AST, um, AST DM came I up with. I think there's a D in there. Yeah. I am going to switch. I like the scratchy bit through here, but I'm going to want something a little more uh, tight and together and giving me a nice stroke. So I'm going to switch into my number two ruby satin. And I'm going to start maybe thinking about scales and patterns and things like that. So one thing I'm going to do is I know I want some orange on my, my little koi. She's going to have some markings, right? And I have to decide where those are, essentially. They don't have to be perfect, but I just want to make sure that I'm thinking about where could these markings be. So I'm going to have a marking maybe here. It's going to come up towards the belly, but I want the little thumb bum there to be white. And then I'm going to make another little marking maybe here. I could do like a small something there. That's how I'm going to do my little koi. And I'm going to use my darker mix of this, right, to start laying this in. Now, as I'm coming here, I'm going to kind of dash out, if you guys can see, with my brush on the corner here. And so I'm not just going to pull the stroke. I'm actually going to start implying the texture of everything. By what I'm doing. And some of these scales and effects will be going into the white. It's an interesting thing that you can do. But we're laying the groundwork right now. Let's get that groundwork laid in. As we're going, I'm going to get a little of my burnt umber in my phthalo blue. And I'm going to just darken my little mixture here so that as I'm coming down into the water, that's getting darker. Because it would. Until we eventually couldn't even see it at all. Because it would be below the light reach point where the light could even reach down into the water to tell us anything about anything, right? 
you know, so you can even come in here and your water mix is essentially your phthalo blue and phthalo green. So that could actually be impacting up into this tail a little bit as we obscure our view. And then we're going to also have to make some decisions about water lines, which is really fun. I like doing that. I like making decisions in my painting. I hope you guys do too. Mm -hmm. <gasps> a little Quinn and a little carrot. Starting it. Just starting to think about what's happening in my tail. I'm so I'm really excited about adding the gold paint, but you guys don't have to add the gold paint. That is not required. No matter how cool it is. <laughs> The tail will definitely build up and up and up. And the other thing I'm going to think about is I may even take some of this effect and coloring up into her, even into her skin area where it's like, like she's coy through and through, which I'm pretty excited about. You see, just implying that texture, even though I know I'm coming. Or I might do it more like like freckle, you know, the way like skin tone is. Now, as I'm coming into the uh, white part of her skin, I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre and my Indian yellow together and my white. Because I find that there's almost like a, like a yellow cast in there. And it needs to be a little darker than that. Here's a cool trick I'm going to show you. This month's uh, Big Art Quest, which is the Purple Pixie, she's going to utilize a lot of this purple, yellow, ochre magic. So the contrast to this yellow is a purple. And by adding the smallest amounts of that purple into my really amazing yellow mixture, is it does a thing called graying it out or toning it back. And that's going to help it not be so vibrant that I'm having trouble believing my eyes when I'm looking at it. <laughs> I do not believe my eyes. I don't believe her. You know, and this is a really nice mixture. I've done whole paintings like where I studied just contrast. We just do the whole painting in a contrast. And I rather like it. And keep adding a little white into that mix. Right here. See how that happens? How the scales start to happen? Yeah. Misting my paint so it doesn't dry out. Go a little bit longer and then I'm going to have to coffee break, guys. Hopefully you guys are doing your self-care breaks as you need. How's everybody doing? I can, while I'm scaling it up, we can do some questions or... Man, it I'm is a good really... I like to let John know because sometimes he doesn't know when I'm a good place to stop. Yeah, things are going really pretty good out here today. You know, let me flip over here and see. And, and uh, there's a good question from Vanessa. She says, how much water do you use with acrylic? That's just a general... This is a good question in general. Um... So what I'm going to say is brand by brand, there are some differences because there's differences in the quality of the paint. So in the paint I'm using, you can get away with like a 30, 40% mixture and still have binding. If you're painting um, a strange off-brand or a very inexpensive paint, sometimes I would say none. But that's about the paint, not the nature of acrylic because acrylic was made to be able to be thinned with water. And no people came back and said, no, then we'll give you water mixable oils. And I'm like, what is the point of that? <laughs> that would be like oil carried acrylics. We just switched again, or what are we doing? <laughs> so here we go. You can see I'm putting that down there. So um, you can always use mediums. Um, if you're just trying to make the most archival, well-constructed work that you can, 
a lot of artists will use an airbrush medium in, in exchange for water. Um, it's also called a uh, fluid medium, high flow, high flow medium by Golden. Mm. High flow. I have a big jug of it somewhere. I can show you. I got a big, big jug. Where are you going? Right here. You find a jug. Oh. You can hear it. This is like the consistency of water. Oh. This is a giant jug. And yeah, I did send it. I bought it myself. Um, I just got, there was a sale. <laughs> so you use that in place of water and then you can do washes and a lot of effects and absolutely never worry about anything under binding. I've never had golden paint under bind on me in just ever. Um, so it's not a worry that I generally am fighting with. I've added more purple. I'm coming at a little more of my yellow ochre into that mix. It's going to make a darker color. The glazing medium, too, that's like an extender. When they say the word extender, that's what they're really saying. Um, so, you know, it's a paint by paint. You know, certain paint companies, you're never even going to notice it. You can practically do washes with it because they work so hard on their formulations. Other paint companies, it's like if you've got your brush damp, the paint won't stick. There's just no standard. No set thing that you can say, okay, well, I expect this. I'm darkening this hair because we're going to run the water over it a little bit, I believe. <laughs> do you need to run the hair dryer? No. I'm going to zoom in on what you're doing there so they can okay. see a little more. So that's what I would say about that. And I wish there was like this concise answer. I'm actually working on doing that. If you are on Facebook and you can make it by on Tuesdays, I'm doing technique tune-ups, which is I'm just going back to the beginning and explaining things, terms, vocabulary. Probably going to be adding like worksheets and stuff to it at some point here. I keep darkening this as I go down. Renee had a question there. Hi, Renee. Now you're just grabbing some. What purple is I'm that? I'm just adding purple to the mix and darkening as I go down. Which purple is it? The Diox. Diox purple. Okay. I should have more purples in my palette, but I try not to make students. I actually I do have more purples. <laughs> I try not to make students go out and buy a bunch of purple. Okay. So Renee had a question. What happens when it underbinds? Okay. So here are the effects that you might expect from underbinding. Um, the immediate effect that you would have is that when you go to apply another layer on top of what you previously painted, it's like tempera. It pulls up away from the canvas. It pulls up from the surface that you're painting on. So you can't get it to stick. The next effect that you might observe and see, oh, yeah, totally. Yep, always. He's warming up with coffee. That you might see is when you go to do a brush varnish, uh, the color, especially black, will pull into the varnish. The next effect that you will see down the road, like say you spray varnish. I've seen artists do this. They think, well, I, var they think that varnish is carbonite, you know, from like Star Wars, and it's going to seal this forever, and so they'll, they'll spray varnish. And uh, then a few years down the road, maybe 10 the painting begins to like bubble up from the surface and pull away. Um, we're going to talk, I'm going to show some pictures on Technique Tuesday uh, of the test that you can do. There's an accelerated test you can do to see how your paint is going to be. So like, you know, in uh, fluid painting, everyone's adding silicone oil. How are they going to figure out if the silicone oil is really exiting the paint, right? Cause it's all mixed and churned together and they, Clip cup it out and then, you know, and people say they're wiping it off. How are they going to determine it? Well, they're going to take it to this one area in, uh, there's an area in Florida and there's an area in Arizona where these products are put out for months at a shot in the desert sunlight. And they know there's so much of this environment that hits it. And so then they can quickly age the paint to see what the painting would age like in normal gallery conditions. So everybody who's like, oh, yeah, it's totally fine. I'm totally sure. We're going to have an answer probably in the next year, definitively. I mean, and I really hope if we were selling to collectors, the answer is it's fine and it's archival. Yeah. No. So I, I saw what happened to the resin artists before art resin. Art resin, the product being an exception, is people used to pour resin. And all those artists swore it was non-yellowing. And then they did this test and it all yellowed and they got crucified by their collectors. Art okay. resin, however, I will say, is but, awesome stuff. What? Art resin. Art resin, not 
included in this, that was a product developed to address the in, impossible to address yellowing issue. And it does some awesome stuff. It does some awesome stuff. So obviously I'm not, I'm not including art resin. I'm just adding some of my watercolor here I, to my, my, my main mix here. My personal favorite reason for mm. art resin uh-huh. in the studio is you get to play with fire with it. That is your personal favorite reason. That would be the one time it is safe to be using <laughs> fire. And you see it when it did. There's so many rules, and then there's these weird exceptions. But when? And that and that's hard because you got to experiment. But then, you know, are you doing your due diligence in your study? Did you drag your painting out to Arizona and stick it in the sun? So can I be a parent? I didn't. So uh, that's why I'm like I'm waiting to hear. Because <laughs> I, I didn't can, do that. Huh? Can I totally be a parent husband with you? Okay. So I went up. I went up front to wipe away the coffee. Uh-huh. And your two children are just beautifully drawing. On the on the sofa, they're not even watching TV. They're just drawing and coloring and talking to each other about the stories they're making. Oh, sing my, my yellow. They, they didn't hear you Indian. coo and ah because I, I had you muted. Ha. Sorry. And so, okay, he was telling me something cute about my kids, and he muted me. I don't. It's okay. Just first place I can. So I'm remixing my color again. I'm adding that purple, and I'm gonna get this little white into it. I'm mixing a lighter value. Sometimes. You know, you got to make highlights, right? I don't know if you, you do. I do. It's my job. You, you could also do that. Her koi tail needs some highlights. Now, up here, I might include even what's under the water, some a little bit of this, right, that would somehow break the water and come down. Such a strange project I started this year. But you know what, guys? I'm hanging in. It's a 12. It'll be 12. All of them will be yours. Collect them like Pokemon. <laughs> Collect all them. Perhaps we will put them in a collection together. Also, if you're on my Facebook and you're in my big art quest group, can I thank you guys? Art high fives. Yeah, y- y- you guys are such a good behaved, wonderful group. You post quest stuff. It's related to the topic. It's not, I don't, we don't have to like do a lot of crazy moderation in there. It's like a joy to go in that group and see what everybody's up to. And I have really come to appreciate you as of late and how well. You treat me and the subject in the space, and it's just the best group, and I just appreciate your positivity, and I appreciate how you guys treat me and each other. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm adding a little highlight here, because, you know, up at the top of the tail will be a little bit wider, right? Are we starting to see little scales happen? I like yes, yes, I scales. am. Yes, scales. I like Yes, I might have to come put some shadows back in. Yeah, no, my big art quest, like, any ranting you hear me do about Facebook, you guys are excluded. You're like the AP students. Can I drop some <laughs> looting? Can you oh, drop looting? Oh, Carolyn, Carolyn just says, that's a very, very good question. I have some eluding I would like to do a little oh, later. Oh, yeah. But I'll elude to some no, stuff. No, don't elude. Just go, let them be surprised. Okay, okay. so <laughs> I'll ask them. So, yeah, that's all the eluding you guys get. I alluded to something that I can't allude to. That's right, you can't. So stay tuned because we'll have Who some knows? alluding news. All right, Carolyn would like to know, do we get to see the wedding video? You guys get to see the wedding video and the Bob Ross video and my sketchbook, which is honestly the one I'm most freaked out about, but okay. Hmm. Now, what's well, not really a sketchbook so much as a whole pile of art <laughs> and some, I think with the pictures, I have a lot of weird stuff. There's some funny stuff to talk about. It's going to be weird. I don't know. I'm a very strange person. Y'all about to find out. Huh. All right. I'm going to keep adding this white to my brush as I mix into that little, you know, that yellow ochre and Indian yellow mixture. Like you do. Put that in there. Oh, let's get ready. Oh, that's a nice little highlight, isn't it? Got to go with a nice little highlight when you catch it. Definitely just need some right here, right? I love that right there. Yeah, you guys get to see all that. I'm real excited to do the Bob Ross thing because, well, boy, sometimes I feel like I know more about oil than some of the oil teachers, and I think to myself, I won't even teach oil because I don't consider myself enough informed enough to do so. (laughs) And then I look at it on YouTube, and I'm like, maybe I am, but I'm not. Um, So I'm not going to. But I'm looking forward to the Bob Ross one because I don't paint oils. What I, what I, I just know about oils because, you know, as you're learning about pigment and medium and everything, you pick up a lot of info. I've painted with them like a couple of times. 
and was like, this is never going to dry. I have no time for this. <laughs> I have to pick a different medium, something that's faster. Because, you know, ADHD. How are we doing? Oh, wow. She's starting to be a thing, isn't she? Now, I will, I will pass on to you, Miss Sherpa, Sherpa Sherpa, because you can't see the chat. I can't see the I'm chat. I'm going to give you a little bit of feedback. Don't write me and yell at me how I didn't answer you because I can't see the chat. Please she don't do this. Very stressful. They love watercolor Wednesdays. They would love to know more about Technique Tuesdays. Okay. So on Facebook, I am kind of revisiting everything, right? Because we have a different audience on Facebook, interestingly enough. And so you've only missed one episode where I'm just going back to the beginning and I'm saying, this is the stuff that just to be a painter, not the master of the universe, but to be a painter functionally, not to impress anybody, but just in the art store and in your studio where you have any idea what's going on, I'm just going back to the beginning and just taking about a gazillion years of art school and making it real simple and direct. So the episodes are even shorter than what I have here on um, YouTube. Interestingly enough, how'd that work? I don't know. And I just go back over terms and everything, and I think we're going to have a section of the website. And then we're, John's going to edit these down and then release them in a delayed manner on the YouTube channel. So actually, if you want to hear the information first, it's on... Uh, Facebook, and then also on Facebook, I have the little segment where I film it, and then I have a Q&A before and after. So you can be like, wait, what did you mean? And that also helps me go, oh, I have, to, I have to maybe explain labels again. I'm thinking I might need to go into the labeling of paint a little deeper, because that's where all the information is that you need. And I think that there's some terms that if you understood them, you wouldn't be tricked. There was a product at Golden, but it doesn't matter. I'll tell you on Tuesday. All right. <laughs> this is where I... And then Watercolor Wednesday is I am doing one hoot, very beginning watercolor lessons. Kind of like I started out on YouTube with acrylic. I'm just doing really basic, never before painted with watercolor projects that are, you know, introducing them. I'm sure I'll get up to two hoot and three hoot. But right now we're just at the one hoot level, just painting little things to get you guys into that medium. Because the acrylic and watercolor work beautifully together. That's what's happening there. I'm going to paint some more scales. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get a little of my CAD uh, red light, like you do. So sorry. Four. This is that kind of a day. Where I wax, that's what a you know, wax and wax eternal. We, waxing. We did, I, I, this is what we're here for. I, I like hope so, because it's happening, isn't that, it? To see you paint and talk about painting. See me paint and talk you, about painting. What are you painting with there real quick? I've mixed this lighter scale color, and I'm just adding a little bit of this kind of in here. You know, maybe there's a little that we kind of see hidden into that. And then where it might be a little more in the sunlight, I'm going to come and, you know, add some of that. There's a lot of shading, you know? So much shading. And then I can drop a little scale here and there in its little pocket, which is always fine. I'm just free. And I haven't even done like the part where I make it look wet. That's my favorite part. When I get to make it look wet is when I get super excited. <laughs> which may be pitiful. I'm not really sure. I have to put a fish back here, don't I? While I'm here, I might as well put Mr. Finny, but Finny Butts <laughs> right here. I'm going to curve this a little bit more, I think, this time. We've definitely moved through the ugly phase and into the, hoo -hoo, it's looking like a mermaid yeah. cocktail. This is, you know, it was so funny because at Nanta, I um, painted a bit and I just started the project there. You know, I didn't know I should come with a almost done project. <laughs> You're like, do, 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 do. And the I'll other paint painter something. who's with me, she's like pretty famous and in one stroke and... Um, you know, those, you know, decorative painting and watercolor. She's done a bunch of big deal classes. Um, she's there. Yeah. She's always with silver breast. And she's watching me. And she's like, what you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm painting. And she's like, that's a real big deal. I'm like, it is it's really big. I'm going to get it done. She's like, there's a lot happening in the show. She was so nice. And she's, <laughs> like, she's like, I think it was like she... It, she was just, she, she wanted me to win, but I just. She just was like, you don't know what you just walked into, I left that show, and I'm like, I see why you bring these small half-finished pieces. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> like, I got it. If they let me back next year, I'm coming with, like, work that's at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
There you go. I'm going to just take a little fin off here, like you might, kind of off the canvas, and then maybe a little, little fin that way. Let's take that one down a little deeper. Let's take that one into the deeper, deeper space. What's wonderful, if you're trying to gray, you know, your fish, if you look at the green does that. That's what pushes the fish down into the water, see? You need to push your fish into the water. Sometimes we have to push our fish into the water. Push your fish in the water. It likes it there. Such a weird person. I'm always so shocked. Anybody comes to the show. John will tell you. <laughs> Just shocked. <laughs> No, like, I am always, I love, love, love that we always have such a wonderful community of people who come to celebrate painting and community and hanging out and just like, it's like pretty awesome. No, the art community is like the rock and bomb. I would say something about that, but then I get you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to start anything with the other communities. Jeez. We like all communities. They are all equally awesome to their own members. We just like ours the best. That's all it is. It's just, you guys, everyone's allowed to like their but community But I love the, the whole art community on, on YouTube, of course. I just like the one that shows up to my painting tutorials. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Don't write my mother. Okay. So I'm just refining Mr. Little Fishy here a little bit. I don't actually, if you'll notice, I painted him sort of like he's uh, rippled. Can you see how he is? Yeah. That makes him seem very deep. If you ripple a fish like this, it looks, the water is picking up the color. It'll make it seem like the fish is down deep into the water. Oh, yeah. So that's one of the ways you can talk about deep fish. Deep fish. fish. Is just give <laughs> a little tiny highlight on the top? I'm going to get a little of my cad red light and a little of my cad yellow medium. Next year, we go on a trip. <laughs> it's a group. Don't you think we're due for a field trip, John? Yeah. The Big Art Quest group is due for a field trip. Dude, I'm ready for a field trip. We go paint I in France or something. I come from France. I don't know. Copies. We'll have to see if the... Maybe the French Canadians would have us. The French Canadians. <laughs> we, maybe we can't make it all the way to France, but we can make it to France, Canada. I didn't even speak French good enough for the French. How am I going to pick up French Canadian? I'm going to be overwhelmed. Okay, though, I would do it. It's really pretty there, too. It's so sweet. I just thought it'd be nice to, like, you know, paint. So you can see I kind of added that little pop of light color. These pops of light are very, very helpful to us. It can even be nice to take a little bit into the scales that you would traditionally think of as white. Going lighter and lighter and lighter, but still orange. Lighter and lighter and lighter, but still orange. Bring over my zinc because it doesn't change the color. I like zinc. I'm so glad that acrylic artists, you know how I feel as an acrylic artist when I hear stuff happening to oil artists? I feel like what Mac users used to feel like when we'd hear things happening to PC artists. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that back when we used to have confidence in our Macs? <laughs> back when we used to have confidence in our Macs. Yeah, you know, I think what it was is that those two companies were led by titans of industry that led with personality that people could get behind and believe in. Both what I think they jobs. also were like complete like it's gonna be like this or it ain't happening. Yeah, I mean they were just uh, like inspirational leaders, but you know, <sighs> it's looking good. Titans for sure. They're easy to get behind. All right, if you have it, treat yourself to a little gold. A little gold. If you have it, I like gold. What if I wanted a lot of gold? Now, all right. Look, everyone thinks I'm sponsored by this company. I'm not. <laughs> I am committed, and there's a whole bunch of reasons, and they're not the only one I like. There's a bunch of fine art companies that I love. These are just ones we can buy locally and yeah. we like. And we, and we, and we, and right now, much like actually... Apple, when Steve Jobs was there, I believe in this company. Oh, yeah, we do. We Where love these people. Where it's a change, I would change, but, but it's right now it's this. We met them. They're cool. Yeah. We like yeah. them. We do. The, the Titan is still there. <laughs> the Titan um, is still there. <laughs> so I like this one because it is so loaded with metallic pigment. Because it is not, I find a lot of the metallics to be overly transparent. There's only a couple companies I think can really do it. 
Um, and I do have an exchange for a lower price one that might work. I think Abstract has one of my favorite lower cost ones, but that's by Seven Layer Acrylic. And then I also really like Talon also does it yeah. because they don't skimp on the pigment when they reduce the cost of the paint. So it's golden in this and this and in um, whole white. Um, so I like that. You don't have to do this, but it's really awesome. You guys often share with me this artist, and he does these sort of wonderful, fantastic plus-size mermaids. He does also other regular-size mermaids. But he loves to use a little gold in his scale. And I have always felt like that was just fantastic, and I love it on mine, too. And I definitely a technique I took in and have continued to enjoy and use. And you can do into the white or into the red. It's just a little touch. And what it'll be is that as viewers move around it, there'll be a little bit. This is especially powerful under the water. So it's optional. Do they have any more, like the suggested brands, were they concerned about that or is that all good? No, I think that's good. Okay. So this is just oh, a little touch. They did. They were asking, what time on Wednesdays? Uh, would you be doing more watercolor work? I, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go by and uh, post up the example on the Facebook page. And uh, um, we're trying to solve this to get you guys notifications that do not rely on Facebook or YouTube. Um, we tried a new YouTube service, and that was just... Not what we hope for. I appreciate everybody who jumped in and helped me out with that. And it just wouldn't do the messaging we were hoping for. So we're trying to solve it. John's working on it really hard. And hopefully in a week or two, we're going to be announcing to you guys a, a way for you guys to get a notification about where we are and at what time as it's happening. And we'll only use it for that. Uh, but for right now, go by Facebook, follow the page. I'm going to be posting up those times today, tomorrow morning, depending on what we do with the kids tonight if we go to a movie or not. <laughs> that, will be, that will be what it is. All right. Can I paint a little more? Mm, you, I guess, yeah. It's okay. a painting show. It I is. Suppose. I mean, like, am I okay on time? I'm, just, oh, I'm yeah, still energetic on. for it, so. Yeah, you got a lot of stuff. This is your show. We could, like, kind of, you can go over. I think I might go into my zinc, because I initially want this line to be fairly light. So what I'm going to say is that there's a water line that's happening here. Right? See this right here where the rock is? That helps me know my waterline. If I put the waterline on my rock there, then my waterline on my mermaid will be something different. I mean, similar. Right? This is what, see how I'm talking about this waterline? And I'm using my zinc because it's going to let me do this uh, fairly easily without overworking it while I work it out. Sometimes I have to work a couple things out in my head, right? And if that's about there, then we could, well, what did I get into? Oh, I got into my, my glazing medium. Ignore this. Oh. This did not happen. <laughs> I didn't do that. Don't copy that part. All right, there we go. Got rid of it. I just want the zinc. I don't want any glazing medium. So the trick is going to be just making sure that it feels like the water lines are matching. And I may have to change a little of the, how I painted the scales to make it feel that way. And I may have to ripple out into the water. See, look at that. I go ripple, ripple, ripple. Doesn't that help? Is that crazy? I love doing above and below uh, things. It was something my mom and I used to do um, when I found I was going to have my first daughter. We got into this above, below, whole deal. World. Painting. All right. Back into my scales here to make this work. I'm going to get into my... Indian yellow and my yellow ochre again and a smidge of my dock's purple. And I'll just make sure those scales are blended in nicely to the world around them like they would be, right? Gotta blend it in. Blend it in, blend it in. But that also lets me know where I, would, I could lighten this tail a bit. Because very little uh, water is over it. I'm getting this lighter, lighter mix into there. 
and how I'm going to take this right up to my little water's edge, like you do. Now, if I'd done a tonal study before, probably a lot of this would be laid in before I got into it. And I can do that. I don't always like that process. Sometimes yeah. I like to put things in as I'm painting. I like to feel the painting. I know that sounds like completely pretty, but I do. When you say tonal study, that means like a black and white, right? Yeah, where I'm just using a monochromatic color scheme and I lay out all the values in sort of a, a wash. And, and an umber study would be a monochromatic version of it. I mean, yeah, that, that's it would just a, be utilizing color. umber. Right, that's what I was a, trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's when you use a single color. And you pretty much do. You use really a single color in most of the tonal studies that you would, you would be doing. All right, no. let's get a little purple in here because we have a couple shadows we've got to work out a bit into the whites. So like, this might need to be a little more in shadow over here. Get our yellow ochre into it. See, that's just darker. And so that's one way we can say, hey, oh, hey, this is just a little bit. It's not as bright as some of the stuff. And I can bring this under. There we go. And then I can even come and take a little of my phthalo blue and my burnt umber and my glaze, yeah, glaze, 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 and just make sure that there's a that cool sort of, it's the transparency of this that lets me get away with it though, guys. Right? Because I don't want to change the overall feeling of what I got going on. Adding that little shadow value to some spots that might have it. And then for sure, right, we'd be right here. And like this, back into my glaze. I love a glaze. It's a good Who glaze. Who doesn't love a good glaze? Who doesn't love a good glaze? <laughs> I don't know, probably somebody. Somebody's like, somebody somewhere will be like, glazing is lazy. Lazy, friends. It's la There's always somebody who's got like, glazing is lazy. <laughs> all right so you can see i've kind of created a shadow i've got that going tail's looking really good she's looking pretty good now it's going to be about how i work this water here and this water line and also how i'm going to work the reflections and things that will help make her feel a little bit wetter right that there's water involved into this whole rigmarole well, there, there she, there's definitely some water involved. There is some water involved. So I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue and phthalo green and a little of my burnt umber, dipping in the water and just swirling around just to improve the flow of smidge, right? So <laughs> let's... Did uh, you say improve the flow of smidge or improve the flow of smidge? Improve the flow of smidge. Okay. It's like, wait a minute. We used it as a noun and not an adjective. I'm putting this darker color here because we're going to do just a few water drops that are falling down. See how this works out for me before you copy. Right? Make sure it doesn't go really weird for me because it could. But one would hope that, you know, if she popped her tail out, that there would be a little bit of splash off, right? A little. More into the blue here and back into this. And then I'll get some of my, look at that. I'm getting some of my zinc. And that's what I mean. Like it just doesn't do as much. And I'm going to just start the highlight process of these water drops. You've done this with me before, right? With the mermaid. My midnight mermaid. So when I have that there, when I come back and add the highlights to those water drops, it'll help it to pop. And it will let them feel like, you know, that they're there and that they happened. I'm going to go ahead and get my little mix up and get a little glaze. I'm going to come here and just uh, glaze a little bit at this edge. Oh, wow. That really did a lot there to make that. Uh... Yeah. Help. 
Can't it? Can just help a little bit. And it's about that transparency. Right? We've got a transparency. So we're not over adjusting and taking away all of our hard work or removing our gold flake or anything. We're just carefully putting her tail in and out of the water. And that would seem like, I think, for a lot of people, I think mentally maybe that's the hardest part is figuring out how do we paint some of this above the water. It looked really good. <laughs> and how do we paint some of it below? Now, we've only, we've only got about 10 minutes before we get to the top of the hour. Yeah. And I'm not sure how much you want to get going here. I just kind of want to give you I'm gonna, a heads I'm gonna, up. Like, it's like as long as I'm not, like, fatigued, but then the minute I start to feel the fatigue because, you know, the kids have got this stuff. I will go. I'm just adding a little bit of this. A little bit of this little splashy bits that you might have. With the titanium now. So, so sometimes uh, alternating the titanium. And now let's make some little. Isn't, aren't those fun little? Oh, yeah. I love those kind of little. That's where we make lines. the surface. I love that. I could do that forever. Like, all right, see how that's going. Oh, she's looking really good. Getting right into my white, white, white. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to. There's some splashy drippy. Just a little bit. And it's nice to have a little splashy drips, right? Yeah. Little splashy drips. Little splash. I might even put out my fluid whites. Sometimes that's what the fluid white is for is because it's already very wet. Fluid paint is the same amount of pigment, but it uses a polymer that's not as stiff. doesn't have as much going on in it to hold up the body of it. Self-leveling, but the pigment load is not reduced. And so sometimes when you have that, you can actually, there we go, get a better, ah, that's it. That's what I was looking for. I thought I remember them saying that technically speaking, the uh, the fluids have a higher pigment density because there's less space between the pigment molecules in the. I believe you are correct. There we go. So we got a little bit of that. Can we? Is that a little splashy? A little bit. That is very splashy. Now let's take this fluid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to a couple spots and I'm going to make some reflections. Because when we're wet, we have a bit of that, don't we? Oh, yeah. And we don't need a lot. It's these little weird touches that can sometimes, like, bring it home and say, oh, this, this is wet. I'm just going to say big art hugs to our loving community who's been out here hanging out with us. You know, I see so many of the loving faces that have supported us through this last St. Jude pro project and through, you know, all of the th all of the shenanigans that we've done here at the Sherpadom. We just love seeing you guys and appreciate well, you being here. Yeah, I have to say, like, even ha believing in this weird, crazy class idea on YouTube, thank you. Coming and hanging out with us on these live days and sharing your time with us just love it thank yeah. you so much i was told many many times people would not be interested in a class like this but you you proved them wrong apparently i did <laughs> i want to uh work a little bit more up here and into the rocks so that our next session we're kind of like down to her and the flowers so i might get some rock in if y'all don't mind just get some rock just I a little you rock. some rock time i might get some rocks in some rock I'm going to pull a little of my phthalo blue into my burnt umber, like you do. I'm going to darken this. I may lose some of her hand as I'm painting this in, and that's okay. Right? I'm okay with that. That's all right if I do. Because I'll paint it back in. You guys have the traceable. You don't have to uh, worry about that at all. 
So my first, I'm just going real dark with this first color. And then it goes so nice over what we already have, doesn't it? Now, what's often interesting about pond rocks, pond rocks, a very interesting kind of rock. I'm going to get a little bit of the blue into my brush and come down somewhat beneath the water line. I may even paint that little guy out there and darken this a bit because as this goes down, right, it would be quite dark, wouldn't it? Quite dark. And so I need to make sure that I'm showing that depth that I would have here beneath the water surface. You know, you can imply the rock is going a lot of places. But you want to just make sure that you show the depth of that space there. Back into my, my burner. Now here's a crazy thing. If you get CAD red into this mix, you can actually start to really get some very fascinating little grays and rock colors. Isn't that, isn't that wild? Like you see it with the white and you're like, I didn't expect that color from phthalo blue, burnt umber, and a little cad red. Oh, push the wrong button. Sorry. So it's sometimes a surprising color. And I got to get my rock reference. Got to put my rock girl on, on, Sherpa. I got to get my rock reference. You know, and I just, I'm excited about seeing these come in. I'm just dusting. I love this little brush. I'm just dusting this rock with this little roughly scrubby brush. I'm gonna as I get, you know, down closer to the water, I may or may not dust too much past that. And remember there's an interesting thing you can talk about is you can talk about varying water lines if you create a distinctive line above and below that like when it's like a little bit darker. That will also help inform a couple things about your little rock. Try to keep a shadow going here. If you lose your shadow at all, just get into your deeper color and come back and make sure you've got a shadow. Because she would be casting a shadow onto her rock, right? Yeah. A little bit. Small amount. I'm going to get into my green. I haven't even rinsed out my brush. What? Why? I'm going to get some of my yellow ochre. And my zincs. And I'll start to uh, imply a little bit of greenness into my rock. Just at the beginnings of it. Especially along the water line. Rocks that are in the water often grow. Molds and funguses and all kinds of interesting things. And mosses and algaes and... Stuff that your doctor can't identify. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's trying to make anyone at all be worried. All right, I'm going to add a little purple into my yellow ochre. And I'll grab a little bit of my burnt sienna this time, actually. Mixing it in there. Making my other rock color and get into my zinc. Just a little more to the yellow. I love making little micro mixes like this. Right, more zincs. Facing the paint around. Now let's come here and we'll just start to make some irregular little shapes, right? Little irregular shapes. That'd be one of my favorite ones I've ever done on the channel. She really is cool. That's pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. That right there, I think. I've got this nice green sort of beginnings here. Now, very lightly, I might dust just a smidge of this. It's in the shadow, and that's why I'm dusting so lightly, but it still shows that this part of the rock has some um, texture to it, is believable to the world. How much are we loving the tail under the water? I am loving all of this. This is just really amazing. The way that the water has come together, it's just, I mean... Fun stuff, I think. So amazing. Just good feels. Good feels all the way around. I love it. Yep. Good feels. All right. So 
what I'm doing, you see me going back and forth like this, I am making the pink color sort of consistent through my brush. Instead of being loosely mixed, this would be much more thoroughly mixed. Test that, but oh yeah, that's real nice. I'm just testing that value. And again, I'm just playing to the brush. It's not a magic brush, it's just, uh -huh. you know, you'll find tools and you start to play to them. You'd be like, oh, that tool works really well. I like the marks it makes. Yay, tool. It's a good tool. A little bit right there, right? How you have. And then, uh, you know, you can come along here and maybe add this a dusting of this little line, the water line. Rinsing out. And I think I'll get into a slightly more vibrant green for the next bit. So I'm going to pull out my green and maybe a little of my Indian yellow. I love this color combo. It's all the ranges of this. And I'll get my yellow ochre in there. Not quite as bright, but it's lovely. And take this and uh, just add this slightly greener aspect to our mossy area. Maybe uh, along the uh, little water's edge here. Now that's looking, looking pretty good. Get some zinc into that. A little more Indian yellow. Zinc and Indian. It's a little bright, but we're going to. Just hit it with a couple spots, right? We're not going to go everywhere because it's such a bright color. But a little bit of it will imply so much, right? A bit here and there. And I feel like there would be some wet on the rock, so I'm going to get a little of my zip. Oh, that was my gold. Hmm. My palette is what we call crowded. And get a little of my zincs over here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about an area that might be maybe wetter. Maybe a little reflection at this line. Between the shadow and this rock. And the lightness of the zinc is going to let me do this. And then we come here and we... Add the water line to that. Add the water line. Just, just implying it a little bit, not taking out the darkness of the rock. How's that going? It's going well. Fun thing is you can take, again, that small brush. This is my number one round. You can add just a Little bit of reflection that might have happened because why because she got it wet because that rock is in the middle of a lake yeah it's in the lake and she just splashed up on it so even though they show a very dry rock if i choose to make it a wet rock that's a i think a little more interesting i believe overall into what we have going on I'm going to get my green and my yellow blue and maybe even a little of my burnt sienna. I'm going to just continue to work this area. And then if I get a little zinc, and I'm just making sure I don't have too strong of an aspect of it anywhere, I can come along. And dust in a little reflection. Right? You can always come back and deepen the water anytime you want to. So it's just really about like playing with that, you know, thinking about those concentric circles coming out. And if we get these little fish done, then we'll have finished uh, really everything but her. And then that, you know, and the wisteria coming down, which I think is actually a perfect next class. So I'm going to power through and get the fish in.
and the water all the way in, like you would want to, so that you could uh, enjoy all that, right? I think she's a really unique, I mean, hopefully she will not be unique on the internet wow. very long. I'm just totally floored by this. I'm going to get a little of my titanium white brush done to my brush, and I'll let it pick up some of the mixed color I did earlier. Cause I want to really make sure that I'm showing a little. I mean, she's just gone way beyond the, the, uh, the original reference there. Oh, yeah. References should be for reference. <laughs> Imagine the reference photos let you take a minute with your imagination and determine what it is that you want to do. This little fine line of water water will help us like say that rock above below. That's all we're doing. We're just making some statements about what is in the water and what is out of the water. Now we're doing right here with this uh, stronger, more considered line. And I don't do that everywhere, but up front where we're focusing, that's okay, right? Yeah. Because it's where our focus is. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. You can have some little waterly splashy bits. Right there. Okay, so that's doing really well. Two little fishies and then be seeing each other again to start the pixie. And then after that, we'll finish her up just to find these a little bit more. So we had the cad red, medium, and the quinacridone that we had liked, which is now starting to skin because I forgot to mist. Mm -hmm. We definitely, definitely want to get the green into that mixture. And the reason we do is so that we can make sure that some of our fish feels very deep. Deeply in the water. Right, and we're only seeing some of our fish. Clearly, because only a little part of it. Glaze, 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 glaze. Right? Only a little part. And I love, I love where you shade the fin a little bit. And some of the bottom of the fish, but then have some of it be brighter. I think it's just some of my favorite stuff to do in the painting, weirdly. Because <laughs> I love playing with where things are in relationship to us. And I'm going to get my phthalo blue and phthalo green again. And a little of my burnt umber. Make sure I come right over here. Got a little bit of that fin showing. Do a similar thing right here. See how I come over the fin a little bit with the shadow? Again, pushes things down. As we're pushing things down, we can also pull a couple things up. So now I can go into my pad orange and I mean, my cad red light and my quinacridone, mixing that brighter scale color. Let's start to talk about that. Maybe a little bit there. You can even touch just a smidge on the fin to push it. Little fish, a little bit of fin. Tap, 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 a little bit to the nose, and up the back a bit. So we're just saying, hey, 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 you're here, you're here. Just using my brush to shape some of the nose like it's much closer to the surface. And then I'll get a little of my yellow into my cad. 
so much fun to do. A little bit of the back. Fun stuff, right? Just highlighting the top where maybe it's it's closer. Now, glasses, because I gotta do that weird thing I did last time, which I really like. Remember, I was so like pleased with myself. I'm gonna get my liquid black out. There we go. In my teeny tiny little brush. I'm going to give this guy a little implied eye, right? Might even come right there. And... Implied eye. And this one, too. But where that all comes together is if I can get that little touch of yellow over the top of it, right? There's some white that I had. So I'll come in where the cad is, and I'll get a little of my yellow on the cad. I don't want it to be just the brightest I've ever seen, but I do want it to be bright enough to show. There we go. I'm going to come right over the top. That's pretty nice. I now I could... It. I could have been tricky and pop one of these out of the, the water with its mouth open. Could have been fun. You love what, babe? I love this. This is one of my favorite ones. I like the koi. You know, now I want to make a, uh, uh, a, a koi murloc. Okay. <laughs> Just, this is very inspiring. I like how, I mean, like, I, I never thought of a koi mermaid. And, like, you know, it's so pretty. And, you know, I just. I, I like how it all came together. I, you know, the scales and stuff like that. It is fun. I love this. It is, it is a wonderful, wonderful feeling. I'm going to just kind of push this little dude a little bit down into the water. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to get my zinc. And I'll make sure that I... So maybe they're like pushing their heads right up to the surface. You know how like they do? They do. They do, don't they? Push their little heads right up to the surface. So she's come to the pond and uh, all her little friends are coming to see her because that's super exciting. What brush were you using there? Okay, so this, today's painting was these three. Let me go over and look at them. This is a Cambridge number four, right? This is a ruby satin number two, and this is an art Sherpa number one. Okay. Um, if you are at a uh, table or a bed, there is, I believe, for sure, short handle version of this, and I think there's one of this. Good um, to know. Short handles can be easier for you if you're in a sitting or laying down position. And so, yes, I totally want to sell everybody mud brushes, but you also got to be con like aware of like what your con conditions are, what your painting conditions are. And if you're in a tiny little kitchen with no room, you're not going to be ever painting back on your brush. So just remember that there are fine quality brushes in both long handle and short handle. Yeah. And don't make yourself uncomfortable. I'm so proud of this so far. I think she's going to be when I swear we're going to put all this gorgeousness up here with her. And then we're going to drop a little wisteria here and there. And I think we're going to all lose our minds for this. I'm so happy. This is so nice. Turned out so, so good. Girl, thank you, Sherpa. Sure. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us today. We love, love, love seeing you. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon.